So we're talking about the standard form of a quadratic function. I want you to write down, and you can use colors if you'd like, but a standard form of a quadratic is a times x squared plus b times x plus c. a, b, and c are coefficients, so they're numbers, and they're not always pretty numbers, but we have to make sure that the a value is not zero. Um, so if this was zero, that means we wouldn't have a quadratic term and you'd have a linear term. Anyways, um, this is a parabola. The axis of symmetry, we talked about that yesterday. That was the line that cut your parabola in half. And then yesterday, if we knew where the vertex was located, that was a really easy way to figure out the axis of symmetry. So yesterday, we did y equals a x minus h squared plus k. And the axis of symmetry was just x equals whatever the h was. Well, I'm sure you noticed today our formula looks nothing like what we saw yesterday. So you're actually going to have to do a little calculation to determine the line of symmetry. And I want you to write down this formula. It's negative b over 2a. The b that I'm referring to is the coefficient right there. And the a that I'm referring to is the coefficient right there. Someone grab the door. Thank you. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is that thing that you just calculated. So whatever negative b over 2a, that's the x-coordinate of your vertex. So we're going to do a little calculation and we're going to find a number. And then if I know what the x value is, I can substitute x equals, and then whatever this guy is, negative b over 2a, into the function. So this looks really complicated right now, but all it means is we're going to use a little formula to find the x value and then plug it into the function to calculate the y value. So essentially, if you want something generalized for you, the y-intercept is at 0, um, oh, one more thought. The y-intercept is at 0, comma, c. And the c I'm referring to is that c right there. So standard form isn't really exciting if you need to know the vertex, because you're going to have to calculate some things. But if I ask you where the y-intercept is, this is a great form to have. So let's look at some examples with numbers. So this is an original problem, 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. This is definitely standard form of a quadratic. Here's my a, here's my b, and here's my c. So the first step is I have to find the axis of symmetry line, which the formula was x equals negative b over 2a. So negative b means I take whatever the b value is, and you give me the opposite sign for that. So instead of negative 8, we're going to write down positive 8. And then 2 times a is going to be 2 times this a, which is 2 times 2. Now, if you're typing this on your calculator, guys, you need to make sure that you group the denominator together. But we can do this in our head, I think. This is just a 4 down here. So 8 divided by 4 is a 2. So what we just found was the x-coordinate of your vertex. So right down here, I can say the x-coordinate of my vertex is 2. Well, that's not enough. I need to know the y value as well. So let's find the y value when x equals 2. So go to your function, which is 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. And we're going to substitute in the 2 that we just found. So 2 times 2 squared, whoops, sorry, minus 8 times 2. A little calculation help, please. Plus 5. One more time. Negative three. Negative three. All right. And this is just something you can type in your home screen if you don't want to do any math. So I have the vertex and I have the y-intercept, or I can't have the y-intercept, guys. It's really easy to find. Go back up to your equation. If you can tell me who the c is, you know who your y-intercept is. The y-intercept is at 0, 5. Okay. So let's go graph all that information. All right, going back to screen. So vertex at 2, negative 3, and a y-intercept at 0, 5. Mm -hmm. um, well, 
the first thing is I just I told you guys the y-intercept is always at 0 C. So if you just want to follow the formula, you can. But I'll tell you why it's at 0 C. It's actually really easy. A y-intercept of a function is where you plug in 0 for all the x's into the function. So if you think about taking this equation and putting a 0 here, putting a 0 here, all that would leave you with is the c value. So that's how we find x uh, y-intercepts, but that's why the formula works out so nicely. All right, let's actually try to graph this. Because a is, what was my a? Is it a positive or negative value in this function? It's positive. So because a is positive, our graph is going to open upwards. So just keep that in mind as we try to graph this. The first thing I want you to do is plot our vertex. I already forgot where my vertex was. It's at the point 2, negative 3. So 2, negative 3. Okay. The next thing I'd like you to do and if you have a highlighter, that might be best, but I want you to graph in the axis of symmetry. We remember from yesterday that the axis of symmetry just cuts through my vertex. Okay. The third thing I want you to plot is the y-intercept. I'm going to go back a screen because I forgot. We decided my y-intercept was at 0, 5. So I'm going to plot the y-intercept at 0, 5. And what I need you to envision is that our parabola is symmetrical about this green line. So, whoops. So can you imagine taking this red dot and graphing his symmetrical partner over here? Wouldn't that be perfectly symmetrical? Okay, your last step is to connect the dots. Now you know I can never graph well on my tablet, so use your imagination here, guys. So why did you go through the last one? Um... This point was my y-intercept, and he has to be symmetrical with his other point over here across the axis of symmetry. So I know yesterday we talked about using the a-value to go like up and over. I didn't do that today. I'm giving you another method of graphing. And this is the most effective way to graph a standard form parabola. So you might be thinking this doesn't seem as fun as yesterday because we have to do a calculation to find the x-intercept or the x-value of the vertex. Yes, that stinks. Um, then you got to plug it in to find the y, so it does require a little more work, but once you have the vertex, you know the axis of symmetry, the y-intercept's really easy to find, and then you just plot a symmetrical point. Can we bring back an old concept, though, domain? What's always the domain of a quadratic? Negative infinity. Yeah, very good. Negative infinity to infinity. And then range, don't forget range is the lowest, whoops, the lowest y-value to the highest y-value. So, negative 3, good, to infinity. I have a question. This point right here, would you consider that a maximum point or a minimum point? It's a minimum point. Now what if I said, what is the minimum value of your graph? Very nice. The value of the graph or the function is only the y value at that point. So watch out for that. Okay, this is a little bit of algebraic manipulation. This should look familiar to you guys from yesterday. Remember yesterday we had vertex form and today we're talking about standard form? Well what if I needed you to manipulate this so that it was in standard form? That's going to require you to use some algebra skills. Basically you need to foil these guys out and collect like terms. I have a lot of kids who tell me x plus 3 squared is x squared plus 9. And that is not correct. Anyone want to tell me what really is happening when you take x plus 3 and square it? You're not just squaring the x and the 3. What you're doing is you're multiplying x plus 3 times another x plus 3. Who remembers what this is called? Distribution, or some of you call it foiling. So that's my first step, guys, when I'm trying to manipulate this equation. I need you to rewrite this as x plus 3 times another x plus 3, and then off to the side is still a plus 4. Okay, so let's use our distribution or our FOIL to go ahead and multiply these out. So starting with x times x, that gives me x squared. Can we do the outer inner at the same time? I have 3x plus another 3x in the middle, so that'll be 6x's, and then 3 times 3 be a plus 9. But please don't forget, you still have a plus 4 over here. So we're almost done. What do you think a last step is? 
Yeah, just combine these constants right here. So finally, standard form, 1x squared plus 6x plus 13. All right, let's try one more. This one's a little more complicated. So, y equals negative 2. And then we have x minus 3 times another x minus 3. That's what squared means. And then there's a little weird minus 1 off to the side. Now, order of operations is super important, guys. I would not distribute the negative 2 first. Because what happens is kids distribute it too much. It's only going once. So, I need you to foil this together first, but keep the negative 2 out in front. So it's very similar to the last question we did. So we have x squared. On the outside, you have negative 3x plus another negative 3x on the inside. So we're going to have negative 6x's. And then negative 3 times negative 3, give me a plus 9. All right, next step. This negative 2 now can be distributed into here. Uh -huh. Gets a little complicated, right? So this becomes negative 2x squared, good, plus 12x, minus 18. But don't forget, there's still a minus 1 off to the side. And then finally, we're done. Collect your like terms. So we have negative 2x squared, still have plus 12x. And then when I combine negative 18 minus 1, I get negative 19. Yeah, negative 19. So what we just did was we took vertex form and rewrote it in standard form. So a logical question is, Abruzzo, are we ever going to take standard form and write it in vertex form? The answer is yes, not yet, because we have to learn something called completing the square before we do that. So look forward to that like, you know, two weeks from now. Remember completing the square? <laughs> Good time. All right, so let's practice a few guys. So that's stuff we just did. I want you to rewrite these vertex form ones in standard form. So basically, I want you to foil it out and then write it so it's in standard form. So each one of your final answers here is going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. It's going to look like that. So first step, expand or foil or distribute x minus 3 times x minus 3. And once we do that, we'll combine it with the plus 1. So all we're going to be able to combine here at the end is the plus 9 and the plus 1. So standard form here is x squared minus 6x, and that becomes a plus 10. Question, where's the y-intercept on this graph? At 10, good. Standard form is really awesome for finding a y-intercept. I have a question, though. What if I was lazy and I said, you know what, I refuse to foil that out. But my teacher just asked me to find the y-intercept for this graph. We could graph it. Yeah, we could go to our calculator, and we could go to y equals, and we could type it in and see where it crosses the y-axis a couple different ways. There's another way we could do it. Um, do you remember, way back here, when I was trying to explain to you guys how, how this formula works out? What's the x value when you're at the y-intercept? It's where x equals... Zero. So if I really needed the y-intercept and it was in this form, couldn't I also just plug a zero in right here? Let's see what happens. What's zero minus three? And what happens when you square that? Negative three times negative three is... And what's nine plus one? Did we get the same y-intercept? So if you have a book question tonight... And it says, tell me what the y-intercept is. You have two options. You could either expand it out to get it in standard form, and then you can see the y-intercept. Or you could just say, you know what, I'm going to plug in a zero, and that's my y-intercept. Okay? So we got options. Let's do one more of these, and then we'll move on to a little more practice on graphing. So be careful here, guys. The 2 needs to stay in front for now. Don't worry about the 2 yet. I need you to expand the x minus 1 times the x minus 1 first. So let's foil that out. This 
So in the inside, we have negative 1x plus another negative 1x, so you have negative 2x's in the middle. And then careful, guys, negative 1 times another negative 1 is a positive 1. Now you can go ahead and take that 2 and distribute it into the trinomial. We have 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. But please don't forget, guys, there's a weird little minus 3 off to the side here. So final, final, final step. Combine your constants over there. Yep, so we have 2x squared minus 4x minus 1. So if I had a follow-up question that said, where's your y-intercept at, what would you tell me? Negative 1, good. How else could I have found that y-intercept, though? I could have just gone to the beginning and plugged in a 0. Let's see if we're right. If I put a 0 right there, I get negative 1 squared, which is 1. So 2 times 1 minus 3. Does that give you negative 1? Sure does. All right, let's skip number 3. Let's practice graphing a little bit. So if you remember the steps, guys, our first step was to find the x value of our vertex. Do you remember the formula? Look back. What was the formula for the x value of the vertex or the line of symmetry? Negative b over 2a. Very good. So once you find that, then, and we can use our unofficial term of <laughs> plug in the x, uh, negative b over 2a to find the y. Okay. Then we're going to plot the vertex. We're going to graph the axis of symmetry. Remember we abbreviated that with A of S, axis of symmetry. And then we're going to plot the y-intercept. <laughs> I know that seems like a lot, but it's going to go fast. Once we have that plotted, you'll be able to see the symmetry, and you can graph your, the rest of your parabola in. All right, first step, let's calculate x value of the vertex using the formula negative b over 2a. So what would be negative b for this problem? Opposite of my b, so negative 6 over 2 times a. Now be careful, guys, if you're using your calculator, the 2 times negative 3 has to be in parentheses like that. So I'm just going to use my brain. What is 2 times negative 3? Negative 6. What happens when you take negative 6 divided by negative 6? You get 1. I just found the x value of my vertex, who also happens to be my axis of symmetry. All right, step two. Plug that number you just got in into the function to find the y. So take your function. Plug in x equals 1. So negative 3, parentheses, 1 squared, plus 6, plug in a 1, minus 2. You can do all that on your home screen of your calculator. I think I get a 1. Can someone confirm that? Okay. So my vertex apparently is at 1, 1. Graph it. So I just plotted my vertex. Now let's graph the axis of symmetry. I'm going to use green highlighter. There's my axis of symmetry. Whoops. Oh, geez. Not a straight line. All that dancing over there. <laughs> All right, step, where are we at? Step five, plot the y-intercept. Can someone look up to the function and tell me where the y-intercept should be located? Go ahead. Negative two. Okay, you should see some symmetry. His symmetrical buddy would be over there. Let's connect. Why is this parabola going upside down like this? Yeah, the a value is negative 3, so he should be a little thinner than normal. Um, that, I don't know if you can tell that or not. But. Um, did I screw something? No, I'm good. All right. Um, if you have a graphing calculator at home and you would prefer to do your homework by using the table like we showed yesterday, you can, but I actually think it's quicker to do it this way, so it's up to you. All right, let's try another one. Step one, finding the x value of my vertex using my formula negative b over 2a. So for this problem, who's the opposite of your b term? Opposite of negative 8 would be positive 8. And then over 2 times the a value in this problem, careful, is a negative 1. So you really have 8 divided by negative 2. So the x value of my vertex is actually a negative 4. OK, 
Okay, take that negative 4 and go back to your equation up here and plug in a negative 4. Be careful though, guys. This first negative is a coefficient. So you type negative and then a parenthesis, negative 4 in parentheses after that, squared, minus 8 times negative 4, minus 9. I need you to type that in your home screen. Is it huge? 7? Okay. So let's plot the vertex at negative 4, 7. While we're at it, let's go ahead and do the uh, axis of symmetry. Yes, sir? Oh, here. Negative 9 for the y-intercept? Okay. So y-intercept is at... Oh, gosh. Oh, do you see what I did? I plotted it. I need bifocals. Okay. There we go. That's 7. <laughs> yes, the y-intercept is at negative 9. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that appropriately now. Now this is kind of hard to tell, especially with me who apparently needs bifocals. Oh, jeepers. Wait, is it positive for? What? Oh. The, this is correct. The negative four over here is correct? Okay. So there's an argument over the y value? So negative times negative 4 squared minus 8 times negative 4 plus 9. So we could either type this in the home screen, or I can do a little math. <laughs> so that's negative 16, because this is positive 16 times another negative is negative, uh, plus 32 plus 9. Oh. I don't, ah, jeepers. I quit. Try again, minus 9. <laughs> like I said, guys, minus 9. So this is 16 minus 9, which is 7. Oh, you totally told me the right answer. I plotted negative 7. Thank you. Well, guys, we're going to run into a problem. I gave you the wrong graph. So my bad. All right, can we use our imagination? <laughs> All right, negative 4, 7 is like, well, yeah, up here. Sure. Sorry about that. Now, you were not wrong when you told me the y-intercept was at negative 9. Oh, my goodness, this is terrible. This doesn't sound fun. Can you guys just follow the symmetry line, though? He's four units away, so I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. There's his little symmetrical buddy. And there is no way I'm going to possibly connect these without missing my dots, huh? Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> ah! Hey, that's pretty good. Okay, that's worse. Anyways, my bad. I gave you the wrong graph. Thank you. <laughs> Do you guys understand the concept of the symmetrical point on the other side of the axes? That's the important part. That's the new thing for today besides the calculation of negative b over 2a. All right, what other fun do we have for today? Oh, gross. Let's jump ahead, guys, because I do want to give you some time to do your homework. Let's jump ahead to number 7. Let's see if I can do one without a mistake, huh? All right, number 7. Let's calculate the x value of my vertex using the formula negative b over 2a. So negative b is the opposite of my b term, so that would be a positive 2. And then 2 times a... You need to think about this a little more carefully, guys. 2 times negative 0.5. If you're doing your calculator, just make sure you use parentheses around it. But what is 2 times negative half or negative 0.5? Yeah, so this is really like 2 divided by negative 1. So I'm getting an x value of negative 2. So my vertex, the x value is negative 2. All right, let's see if I can mess it up. Negative 0.5. I'm plugging in a negative 2 for my x's, minus 2 times negative 2, minus 7. Okay. Negative 5? Yay! Okay. So vertex at two, negative 2, negative 5. Oh. 
While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and draw in the axis of symmetry so I can see the sym uh, symmetry line. I need to plot my y-intercept, which is at negative 7. And then I should be able to kind of count over the same number of spaces across the line and give myself a symmetrical buddy. All right, connect. What from this equation could you gather that I would have already known before I graphed it that he was going to be reflected over the x-axis? The negative a value, yep. And he also seems a little bit wide, like he has a vertical compression. Do you think that's true? What value in that formula do you think tells me he does indeed have a vertical compression? The 0.5 is the a value. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, I think we'll skip that last one. Let's call it a day.